Hi, this is Tom Wagner from NASA headquarters here at Goddard Space Flight Center. Hi, Tom. This is Miriam Kramer with Space.com. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so I'm just going to do a, a quick little intro and then uh, just jump into questions if that sounds good. Sure. Okay, great. Um, so sea ice in the Arctic is melting at a faster rate in recent years, and NASA is using new technology to monitor it. We have NASA's cryospheric program manager, Dr. Tom Wagner, speaking with us today about some Earth-focused NASA missions that are helping scientists understand why the sea ice is melting and what we can do to combat it. Um, thanks for speaking with me today, Dr. Wagner. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, so what is the state of uh, the ice in the Arctic right now? Well, this year's is a tiny bit of good news is that we're not headed for another record low, but we're still headed for one of the lowest years on record. And the simple fact is this, since the 1980s, we've lost about two-thirds of our ice from the Arctic. Wow. Um, and so can you tell me a bit about the ARISE mission and what we can expect to learn from it? So one of the things we're trying to understand is what's causing the ice loss and how it's connected in with the Earth's system. So we have missions like IceBridge, which go out and study the ice itself. They look at how thick it is. But the ARISE mission is doing something special. It's going to go out and literally look at the radiative balance, how much sunlight hits the Earth, how much makes it to the ice, and how much is absorbed by clouds along the way. And so the ARISE mission is going to go out and measure that. Great. Um, and what kind of technology is it's going to be used for, for that kind of mission. I know it's going to be on, on a plane, so, so mm -hmm. what, what does that look like? So picture this, it's one, uh, one of those C-130 planes, which is the kind of planes you see carrying the military around in movies, big four propellers. But it's got holes in it all over the place, and it's literally covered with the most amazing array of instruments you could imagine. Lasers that shoot up and down, radiometers to measure the incoming radiation. And what it's going to do is fly over, and it's going to fly like below clouds, through clouds, above clouds, and it's also going to measure the sea ice thicknesses. Is that very weather dependent? I mean, is, are, are there only certain times of, of year that you could potentially fly that, that plane um, into that area of the world? Yeah, well, part of it is we really only operate in the summer months, you know, when we can see. But also, too, the weather in the Arctic is tough. And uh, every single day we look at the weather reports and decide if it's safe enough to fly. Um, and what was it like to get this mission together so quickly? I know it just took about seven months to, mm. from start to finish, so, so what was that like? Well, what happened was, you know, there's been a bunch of scientific meetings recently where we've, you know, we've talked about the Arctic and its influence, say, on weather in North America, and we talk about the sea ice loss. And we realized that for our computer models, we really needed this kind of data. And so what happened was when we realized that we did have the money available to do it, we right away got on with the mission managers, the scientists, and also the people that developed the instruments, and we started kind of a Tiger Team planning effort, and uh, we're ready to go in the field now. <laughs> Great. Um, and I guess a, a pretty basic question, but also a very important one, um, why, why is this understanding this sea ice melt important? So, so why, why, and why is the sea ice important in general. Sure. The sea ice serves as kind of a mirrored hat on the top of the planet, reflecting a lot of sunlight back into space. And kind of as we lose that ice, now the ocean absorbs more of that incoming sunlight. And also, too, it fundamentally changes things like ocean circulation, how heat gets transferred onto the land in the Arctic that causes the permafrost to melt. So understanding the sea ice loss is really important. And what we really want to do is as we go forward and we try to predict what the temperature and the climate is going to be like on the Earth, you know, in the coming century or even the coming few decades, we need to understand how the sea ice is going to change. And so by doing this kind of work, it allows us to better model those things. Great. Um, and <clears throat> do we have some understanding of why the sea ice is melting? Um, and, and again, how, how, do we, how do we know that? We know it pretty well. Well, one, the planet's warming up, and there, for various physical reasons, the Arctic actually warms about twice as fast as the rest of the planet. And that's fundamentally what's driving the sea ice loss. Where it gets more interesting in this, it used to be that the ice was, was thick, like 10 feet thick or thicker. Now it is thin, like less than 3 feet thick on average. And that thin ice is more susceptible to things like wind, river inputs of heat, and those kinds of things. So the ice is kind of in a new state. And so what we're trying to do is really understand what the factors are that cause ice loss today. And that's why we need to go out and do these studies with aircraft and also with satellite. Great. Thanks. Um, and what other NASA missions are, are involved in looking at the, the, the ice melt? 
You know, it's interesting. You know, NASA's got 17 missions orbiting the Earth right now studying various aspects of it. A lot of those are in polar orbits, and almost all of them play in some role in understanding the Arctic system. For the sea ice, really specifically, the important ones are IceBridge, which is an aircraft mission that studies the ice thickness, ARISE, which is our mission to look at the coupling between the ice and the clouds. We also have ICESat-2 in development, which is going to be a set of lasers that literally go and beam down and measure the height of the ice sticking up amongst, above the water in cracks in the ice and tell us how thick it is and about the health of the ice. So those are the main ones, but other ones, um, some of our famous missions, like the Earth Observing System missions, like on Terra and Aqua, there's a sensor called MODIS that takes pictures, and we use things like that as well. Great, thanks. Um, and a, sort of my final question is, um, most people think of NASA as an agency that, that looks outward and looks to space. Um, so why is it important for the space agency to be looking towards Earth as, as well? You know, one of the amazing things, if you go back to the original NASA authorization language back in the 50s, it included Earth science as one of the things that NASA should do. And, and some of the earliest satellite missions were to study the Earth, and NASA is really the lead agency for doing those things, especially in a research sense. And so, like I say, we have a whole slate, we have five missions that are being launched this year to study the Earth, and a whole slate of amazing missions to be launched in the coming few years. Great. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Really appreciate it. Hey, thank you for having me.